Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 1. So in this series, what we intend to do is create something which will help you build your own personal survival horror game and you can mould it and change it to what you would want. We're going to go through all the things you would expect to see within a survival horror game. We'll be taking inspiration from different games like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, uh, Evil Within and many others along the way. And if there is anything you want to see added to this series, leave comments in each and every video that uh, you feel is necessary. And I'll try and get back to as many comments as I can. So this series is aimed at absolute beginners to Unity. So if you've just downloaded Unity and you're not sure what to do, but you know you want to make a survival horror game, then this series is going to be perfect for you. Absolutely perfect for you. If you have a little knowledge, then this is going to be good too, because you'll be able to learn a couple of different things. And we'll be doing lots of different things in this series that we've not done uh, in any other series. And if you just want to know how to make a survival horror, you want to see me make one, then stick around. There's lots to see. So if you're up to this point as an absolute beginner and you don't know what to tick here when you're installing Unity, it's worth pointing out that you would definitely need the Unity engine. Uh, documentation is probably worthwhile and I'd have the standard assets as well. It's also worth ticking all the different platforms you wish to develop for and port to. You've even got Facebook down here. Uh, you can also tick, if you wish, Microsoft Visual Studio. This is what we're going to do programming in, but you can also do it in Mono Develop. For this series, I'll be using Mono Develop as well, but the code is going to be exactly the same for you as it is for me. So it doesn't matter if you use Visual Studio or Mono Develop. It's up to you if you want to tick this or not. So once you've got through the process, it's all installed, and you start up a new project, you'll be presented with a window very similar to this. You just need to enter your project name, so you could call it My Survival Horror, and then the location on your hard drive where you want to save it to. Make sure 3D is ticked, and don't worry about adding any asset packages. We'll do this as we need to as we go through the series. So. Once you've clicked create project, it'll take probably just a moment to build itself up. But once it's done, you'll have something which looks very similar to this, if not exactly the same. So for someone who is brand new to Unity, it may appear a little daunting at first and you're not quite sure what to do. So this window over here is called the hierarchy. Now the hierarchy is where we store all of our game objects in text format. So everything that we see here in this scene view is also accessible here in the hierarchy. We currently have two game objects in this scene. One's the camera, one is the directional light. And you can see as we click them here, they highlight necessary in the hierarchy. Next to the scene view, we have the game view. The game view is where we actually see how the game will play out as if you were the player. So everything that we build in the scene view is displayed in the game view, but as the actual game itself. So the scene view is where we build everything, the game view is where we play everything. So over here we have the inspector panel and you can see we have the camera selected and we have two components listed here. We have transform, camera, and we have the option to add more components using this button here. We'll do that as we go further into the series and deal with different game objects. And down here we have the project window. This project window will contain things like assets. So anything we import, all the textures, or materials, or game objects, scripts, everything like that will be stored down here. Next to it, we have the console. Now the console, this little button here, is something that we'll use not too early on, but as we get into our scripting, we'll use it a little bit more and more because when we have errors in our script, this is where everything will display to say, we have this problem, here's how we can deal with it, and then it takes to the script. You'll also get different warnings here as well, but as I say, we'll explain a little bit further on. The last tab I have here is animation. Now, if you've just installed Unity, by default, this tab may not be here. If you want it here, it's, we're not going to use it in this tutorial, but we'll use it in a couple of tutorials time anyway. But if you want to have it now, over here you've got this little button. If you click, you can click on Add Tab and then click on Animation. And you'll notice each section has that same button. So you can add and customise different windows, different tabs for where you'd want them to be. You can also arrange the size. So for example, if we wanted the hierarchy to be a little longer, you could just move it like so. If we wanted the hierarchy to be over here, you can just 
click and hold the hierarchy tab here and move it over here. So you can customize the Unity window as much as you need to. I'm going to keep mine as default for now because generally most people will stick to default when they first get a Unity, but if you want to customize, please take the time to do so. It may work in your favor. Another thing you can do is you could actually take a tab and pull it into its own separate window. So if we click on game, for example, and pull it out to here, you can see it's now a completely separate window. And to couple this back, all you would need to do is drag and drop that tab back to where you'd want it to be. So make sure you're clicked on scene view right here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check out our build settings. Our build settings are what we can define what platform we want to build for. So if we go to file and go down to build settings, you'll see here on the left, you have a list of the possible options that you want to develop for. So personally for me, for this series, I'm going to stay with PC, Mac and Linux standalone. And you'll see that the little Unity icon is next to it. This means this is what you're aiming for. If you wish to develop for something like Android or iOS mobile devices, you would just click on it and then click on switch platform. This can be done at any time during development, but the longer you leave it, the bigger your game, the longer it will take to switch platform. It's also worth noting that if you develop for uh, mobile devices, obviously your limitations are greater. You can't have too much going on because of the restrictions you've got with mobile devices. So let's stick with PC, Mac and Linux for now, or if you want to do whatever, it's up to you. So I'm going to click on the X to close that down. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the scene view. So basically Unity is a very object orientated uh, engine, but that's not to say that there isn't just as much coding involved because there is. So let's insert a game object. So if we click the game object menu up here, 3D object, and let's click on cube. So you can see over here in the transform section of our inspector panel, we have some crazy long numbers in our position. So let's override these by typing zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Zero, zero, zero is defined as the dead center of our scene. So here is the center and we can change these positions by going one. We can change this to five, change this to nine. And you'll see now that it is moved off screen. So what we'll do is we'll explore a couple of mouse button shortcuts that we can use. So if we hold down the right button, we can pan around on the spot we're in. So we can look up, down, left, right, anywhere we want. We use the left button to select objects in the scene. We can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And if we hold down the mouse wheel, we can actually move the scene around. At the same time on the keyboard, you can also use the arrow keys to move around the scene quicker. So let's move this object back into the center of the scene. Zero, zero, zero. And let's double click on this cube here in the hierarchy. It will take us straight to the cube. It's a way of focusing on an object quickly and easily. So I'm going to hold down my middle mouse button now and scroll upwards. And now I'm going to hold down my right mouse button to look at the cube. So we can also rotate. Another thing we can do with the transform is if we hover our mouse over the X, Y, or Z, we can change the rotation by moving the mouse over like that. So if we hold down the left mouse button, and move, we can see the rotation. Same with the Z. And if we ever get lost, we can always hold control, press Z to undo. So these arrows here on the cube itself, we've got the red, which is denoted by X. So X is always red, Y is always green, and Z is always blue. So we can move like this, to keep it in a straight line. And let's undo that again. So that's another way of moving an object. So the scale is the size of the object. So if we have this as three by three by three, we can see if we scroll out, our cube has become three times larger. So what we'll do now is let's have this as kind of a floor. So let's make it thinner. So we can change the Y because we want to make it thinner. So we want to decrease here. So let's hold our mouse over here 
hold down the left mouse button and shrink it and we can see it decreases or we could manually type in 0 0.5 and hit enter and there we go let's increase the size going outwards and alongwards to 5 by 5 <clears throat> so now what we can see is this is kind of like turning into a bit of a floor so what we'll do now is let's add in another game object so game object 3d object and sphere just there and hopefully you should be able to see now if we set it to dead center and pull it up slightly we can see a shadow forming now light and shadow is something which is very important within a game but in a survival horror game which gives atmosphere lighting and shadows are essential so we're going to play around with them quite early on in this series in fact we're going to play around with them now so lighting itself is done in a couple of different ways in unity the main one that you'll be left with is the directional light and this one acts as kind of a sum it doesn't matter whereabouts in the scene it actually is the light will always be displayed the same the only way to change this is to change the rotation so for example if we rotate on the x you should be able to see that the shadow is changing so you can imagine this as like a sun object so the more we rotate the more the shadow and light in the scene changes so we can rotate it all the way around constantly so another good thing to do is uh, let, let's add in a, um, a point light so let's rotate the directional light so that it's facing upwards so as it gives a bit more of a darkness to our scene so we can see it's pretty much black here we can't see we can't distinguish between the cube and the sphere so let's go to game object let's go to light and let's add in a point light we can see it looks a bit like an eclipse at the moment doesn't it the way it's um, placed but we can change this if we go zero 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 and let's bring this point light upwards now by default you won't have a shadow type so we just need to click on no shadows and change to either hard or soft shadows i generally like to go for soft shadows because i feel it gives a bit of a more of a, an atmospheric feel to any game we can change the range here so if we hover our mouse over and use the left mouse button we can increase the range and in the scene view you'll notice the range is shown by the yellow sphere surrounding the light so the larger this is the further the light will reach we can change our color here so we can have it red or green blue any color you would want having it white gives it its main color but having it black will actually turn the light off theoretically so let's have it as white intensity can be increased and you can see just how intense it will be so depending on what type of survival horror game you'd want the intensity is quite important so i'm going to hold control z to undo that the last light we're going to look at is going to be a spotlight so if we go to light again and go to spotlight you can see that it is acting just like a spotlight would and you can see here the shadow on the floor if we zoom in the main shadow is being shown by the point light and we're having a further kind of shadow being shown through the spotlight so the spotlight itself is kind of glowing this section right here so it's another good way of creating an atmosphere so if we take our directional light at this point and rotate it back towards us you'll see that we still have the shadows up until a certain point when the direction light becomes overwhelming this can be changed by changing the intensity down so it's worth playing around with the lighting and seeing what kind of effects you can come up with there's nothing too strenuous about lighting at the moment but the more light you have in the scene the more it can use up on resources but we're going to work ways around that later on in the series so i'm going to change the direction of light uh, to keep the intensity as one and i'm going to change it back up so as the scene's kind of dark again and i'm going to take my spotlight and i'm going to increase the spot angle and you can see the yellow kind of shows where the angle is going to be and the range obviously again it defines how far it can be and the intensity works the same as all the others as well colors can be changed quite easily so if we change this to kind of a blue color 
can see it's giving a blue glow. And again, this is vital when you're doing um, development, especially on survival horror, because colouring and light can be absolutely essential. If we change this now to maybe a yellow colour, you can see the two colours contrasting give a moody kind of atmosphere. And we'll be working a lot with lighting. We need to get things just right. So the last thing I'm going to show you guys in this tutorial is this little tick box up here in the inspector panel. If we tick it, or untick it in this case, it makes the item or object that we have selected disappear. It doesn't delete it from the scene, but it just turns it off. So we can see it's turned off now. Tick it again, it turns it on. That's quite handy when you need to see if something is causing a lighting issue, a problem, something's clashing, or various different things. You can use that to turn each object off. And if we press this play button here, we should be able to see what's in our scene. So let's move our camera a bit more into position. So let's double click our camera. And you'll see down here we have the camera preview. It's a quick, neat little way of seeing what we would see in the game view, but through the camera in the scene view. So if we bring it up, bring it close, and let's change the rotation on the X as it looks down. Let's bring it a little further in. And now let's press the play button to go to the game view. Let's perhaps select the spotlight and untick. And we can see it changes in the game as well. Great little thing about this is if you've done something you're not too sure about, once you press play again to get back to the scene view and stop the gameplay, it reverts all the settings that you had when you pressed play. So we'll leave that there for now. We've had a good look at the lighting. And next episode, we're going to look at importing things. We're going to look at textures, materials, and we're also going to look at effects that the lighting has on textured objects because this is again quite essential it gives impact and it gives environment and it gives lots of visuality to it so until that next episode have a play with the lighting see what kind of moody effects you can get just with a couple of simple game objects explore unity itself feel free to move things around and guys i will see you in the next episode thank you very much for watching